good morning. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday weekend. Just getting back from a nice three day weekend. It was wonderful. I definitely took some time to take care of myself, which is why we're here on Tuesday instead of doing our Mindset Monday since yesterday was a holiday. So I know I talk so much about just that self care and the mindset and it really is our driving force. It really is what can make us healthier. So that's why I really focus on that. So welcome and thank you for being here. If it's your first time with me, my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the CEO and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a company that helps child care business owners find success while maintaining profits and achieving high quality child care standards, which are research based. The most important thing we can do in our field is make sure that we're delivering the highest quality to the children because everything we do is really about them, right? It's not about us. So let's say hello as you hop on. I see a couple of you on there. Hopefully my comments are working today. Sometimes they don't, but hopefully they are. And let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm trying some new things with my sound. So, uh, because I know it's been kind of echoey in my new office. I'm working on that, trying to get that echo out to make it sound better for you guys. So I do have an announcement also that I wanted to share with you guys. I am going to be doing my series on um, the recession proofing your childcare industry. I've been getting a few messages about doing it again. So starting September 21st, I will be hosting recession proofing your child care center. I'll be going live every day that week at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I won't have my Mindset Monday that week because I'll be focusing on the series I teach you guys on how to recession-proof your childcare business. How, after what we've learned through COVID, we really need to make sure that we get our centers into a really good position where we are uh, not going to really be hurting again. So that when something like this happens again, we'll be okay. And one thing I want to remind everybody always just to keep us in our the back of our head is there's always a disaster, right? Always a disaster that's going to happen. It may not be in our area, but there's always an earthquake, a fire, a hurricane, a tornado, something that we have to deal with. The only difference with COVID is that we're all in it at the same time. We're all experiencing this all at once, but disasters are always happening and we need to always be prepared. And that's my series on recession proofing. That's what I really focus on for you guys is how can I help you to make sure that your center is prepared like mine was so that when these types of things do come, you're not going to be desperate to try and save your center from bankruptcy. So that is what we will be focusing on and um, for that recession proofing your child care center series. So today though, I'm going to be talking about something different. And also with my introduction, I did forget to tell you guys that I do own a childcare center too. I am actively at my center. Actually, as soon as I'm done recording this, I got to head over there to help them deal with some stuff. So I have that relatability that you guys have, right? For those of you watching, if you're a director, an owner, I've been there, done that. I was a director for many, many, many years. I finally, um, it's been a little bit over a year, turned the director's position over to my assistant of 10 years. She was my assistant director for 10 years. And now I've turned the reins over to her, which is awesome because in a lot of ways, she's definitely excelling me. So uh, I also have a podcast, The Child Care Business Coach, so make sure if you like what I teach. I do teach a little bit more about the actual business of child care in the podcast, but I also do a lot of self-care there too. I just really believe in that mindset because I know that that will get you guys to the next level of success. If you wanna be a great leader, it starts with your mindset. So that's why I really focus on that here. So today we're going to be talking about time management traps. Uh, one of the biggest messages I get from you guys and from my podcast is how do I do it all, right? So I'm gonna to touch, I do teach a series on time management there's so much into time management. It, it, it really is. When I finally really learned how to take control of my time, it was a huge journey I went on because I'm not naturally a good time manager. So it was a really big journey of studying it and putting different 
practices together to really understand and figure out the best way. And so now I actually have um, a system I use that is specific to early childhood education, directors and owners, right? Uh, because I know what it's like for us and how we can manage our time. And so I'm asked all the time, like, how do I run two companies and a podcast, right? I, how do I juggle all of that while I have a sick husband that I care for, while I have children at home, how, and still find time to take care of myself, right? Because every weekend I try to make sure I'm up in the mountains doing something, some type of self-care. And it really comes down to just time management. I have very, very good time management. It's, and it's not natural for me. So it's something I really have to be intentional about and I really have to work on. And that's one of the things I teach is that intentionality. The first thing I teach my members or a client that I'm working with in childcare business professionals is time management because you will never get to that next level of success and leadership without good time management skills. So that's like the first mindset shift I have everybody make. So I'm just gonna give you guys a very brief overview today of some time management traps that we fall into that really take us in an area that makes us just lose that traction. And it's these pitfalls and traps that especially in ECE that we fall into that, well, in anything, not just ECE, but that really stop us from achieving our goals and getting to the next level. The first one, and this is one that I am so guilty of, and it's still really, really hard for me, is perfectionism. When everything has to be perfect, right? Where you just can't, you just constantly revise and revise and revise, and you gotta just keep like, it's never done because it isn't perfect. So a lot of times we have to be okay with just it being enough. Right? I mean, we've got to remember we are human. There's no such thing as perfection. There is no such thing as perfection. We'll never hit that mark. So a lot of times we just have to release it and be okay. One of the things that my mentor, Christine Mailer, says to, all the time is um, forward action is better than perfect action, right? Which she's absolutely right. We, I need to be moving forward, not perfect. Because in the long run, when I'm always striving for that perfection, I'm actually never accomplishing anything. So I have to let go of that, which is extremely hard for me. I will be the first to admit, I know those of you who know me, my staff who's watching and my family, they're just like, uh, yeah, you're, you letting go of perfection. But let me tell you, I would never complete anything. I would never turn anything in. I would never put anything out into the world, this video, right? I would never put everything, anything out into the world if I wasn't releasing the perfection part of it. I do know that it has to be just I just have to get it done. So in order to really help myself get past that perfection piece, I give myself a due date, right? I tell myself, this is it. Your time limit is done. And if it's a smaller project, maybe it's an hour, maybe 30 minutes. If it's a big project, I give myself maybe a two week due date, right? But I basically tell myself, this is when it has to be done. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. Doesn't matter. You think it needs it. This is it. So it really forces me to let go of that perfectionist outcome that I'm really seeking. And it helps me just to at least get things done. So the next thing that um, I really focus on is not multitasking. One of the biggest time drains that you guys will have is multitasking. And this is another big flaw of mine, right? Where I have so many tasks going that I never actually complete one. So when you've got all these different projects and things going on, a couple things on multitasking. Multitasking will create a situation where you are putting mediocre work into the world, okay? If you focus on one thing at a time, you're going to be able to give that all of your energy and all of your creativity, right? And so the outcome of that task will actually be much higher quality. When you're multitasking, and instead of giving one task 100% of your energy, you're giving four tasks 25% of your energy, the results are going to be at 25%. 
instead of the 100% you could have given it. And at the end of the day, it's gonna take you longer to get it done because you're gonna constantly be starting and stopping, starting and stopping. The whole process of starting something, stopping it, and then having to reset, get your mind frame back into it, get going again, is such a huge time drain. Every time you start and stop a task, you're wasting anywhere from five to 20 minutes, okay? So think of it this way. I know when you say like, ah, it's five minutes, who cares? But how many times are you starting and stopping that task? If you're doing it 10 times, in one day, you've almost lost an hour out of that day because you're starting and stopping, starting and stopping, right? So think of it in those terms. If you just dedicate to get it done, just get it done. And I know what many of you guys are thinking, but I have so many interruptions, right? So that is the next time trap that I wanna talk about are interruptions, allowing people to interrupt you. And let me repeat that. You are allowing people to interrupt you. We need to train the people around us to respect our time. We need to train the people around us to honor that, right? So I keep a very tight schedule. I And uh, in my planner, if you look at the timelines that I have, I do schedule actual like content. So this is content that I create, right? So I actually have it scheduled in content creation, right? If something is on my schedule during what I call my fire time, which is my absolutely do not bother me unless the building is burning down time. I don't allow people in during that time, but that's up to me, right? I've trained my staff, I've trained my family and the people that from this time to this time, if you look at my schedule, you'll see the red fire time. These are the times I cannot be disturbed. Let me work, right? And that is something that they just respect. They just know this is it. This is my time, especially in the mornings. It's one of my big times. And uh, this is when I get my things done. This is the time that you need to respect my time. I also have guidelines of when can you approach me with things like, so if you know I'm available from 9 a.m., for example, till noon, that's my open time. You can come and approach me during these times. You just have to train the people in your life when they can and can't interrupt you. Honestly, do their problems have to be dealt with right this minute? Some of times they do, and that's okay. Then they can interrupt our fire time. But if you give yourself two to three hours a day, that's it. I mean, even an hour and a half some days of fire time where this is my absolute interrupted time. I'm gonna sit in my office, get my work done, or I'm gonna do observations of my teachers so that I can actually uh, give them feedback, right? Or this is my feedback time that you train your staff, this is the time you do not bother me because I've got to get these tasks in. You guys, you'll be amazed at how much you get done in a week by just carving off even just two hours a day, 10 hours a week of uninterrupted time. That's when you're going to focus on those tasks that you're not gonna multitask, right? You can just get things done. Um, and I would definitely suggest working your way up. It's gonna start with like maybe 45 minutes, then get to an hour, then two. Some days you might need three, but you just need to communicate it. You need to first learn how to respect your own time. Second, you need to teach the people in your life how to respect your time, okay? So if something is in your calendar and planner, you absolutely have to respect your time. So that's actually my next topic. The other time trap that people fall into, they don't respect their time. So for example, I schedule something for myself, right? In my calendar and a friend calls and they need me uh, to help them with something, okay? And I just look at my calendar like, oh, well, I was just gonna do this. I could drop it and go to something else. So let me ask you, if you have a doctor's appointment or for those of you who work with me, if you're one of my members or if you have a consultation with me, if you're gonna set an appointment with me or if you're going to set an appointment with a doctor, are you going to tell your friend um, that, I'm sorry, I already have another obligation, I can't do this at that time? You're absolutely right, because you're going to honor and respect the time of the person that you're taking and that commitment you made. Yet we look at our own calendars and we don't show ourselves the same respect. You look at the things that you've scheduled for yourself, right? and you don't show yourself the same respect that you show others. So instead of holding to that commitment you made to yourself, you're canceling on yourself. So what I'm challenging you is to start showing yourself 
the same respect that you show other people when it comes to your time. Schedule the things in that you need to get done. Show yourself enough respect and love that you are going to get it done and you're going to do it. You're going to tell people, I'm sorry, I have another obligation. They don't, you know, you don't have to say, oh, I made myself an obligation. Just say, I have another obligation, which is absolutely the truth that I really need to stay committed to. And that's something you can start training your staff to, right? Just that to really respect that. So the next thing is not having a schedule. That's another major problem we have. And that's another real way, reason that we just lose track of time because we're not scheduling things in. We don't have like any kind of purpose, right? That we're going by every day. So that's something I really, it's, it's so important to have a schedule and know exactly what you're doing. Um, if you're one of my members and you go through the time management training, I do teach you on how to create the schedule with intention. I teach you like my flow and how it works and just really being intentional with your time. I cannot even stress to you guys. I'm done working most days anywhere, usually about 6 p.m. I'm done working most days and I work out every, I work out twice a day. I have time to spend with my family. I cook dinner every day. Um, well, most days. I, I'm not going to say every day. Some days I just don't feel like it. But for the most part, I do cook. So I still have time to do all of that because my days are scheduled. I'm not flying by the seat of my pants. I'm not just doing things as they arise, right? So by the end of my week, I also accomplish things. Uh, I've talked to you guys about my uh, director, Brandy. She's amazing at um, doing observations. Every week she does a classroom observation. Every month, every single classroom and teacher at my center is observed and receives feedback. Think about that. How many of you guys are getting that done? And it's just because she uses the same time management uh, that I teach, right? We, she's really good at her time management and she gets things done that most directors think is impossible. And it's not, it's just because she has good time management. So the other big thing that really steals our time is procrastination. Waiting to the last minute to get things done, which again is another one of my big flaws and a reason I give myself due dates. I know that I will procrastinate I will wait till the absolute last minute. Brandy, my director, she knows I will procrastinate. So she knows that in order to get me to get some things, you've got to give me a due date, right? So find those weaknesses that you have and when it comes to your time management and figure out what can I put on myself in order to overcome these weaknesses, right? And so like that is one of my big ones. I've got to give myself procrastination. I will wait to the absolute. And when I and I've got to tell you guys, when I was in college, I used to tell myself, oh, I've got to procrastinate because I work best under pressure. I put out the best work when I'm under pressure. So I had totally justified procrastinating all through college to myself. I had completely convinced myself that I was very effective when I procrastinated. And I believed it. So I procrastinated all through college. And so now I just realized that that wasn't really <laughs> mentally healthy and accurate. So just think of that. I mean, so many of us procrastinate. So um, think of a technique that you can come up for yourself to stop yourself from procrastinating because it really is a time drain. The other one is not delegating. And I, this is one of the hardest things when it comes to time management and working with my clients that they always say, but delegating takes so long to accomplish and it's just so much faster for me to get it done on my own and I know I get it done correctly on my own. But here's what I want to challenge you to think about, okay? When you don't delegate a task that, let's say there is a task that would take you five minutes to do, okay? And you do it every single day. It'll take you maybe a couple hours to train someone else to do it, right? So you're thinking to yourself, oh, come on, I don't want to put, and I don't mean like in one sitting. I mean like after a week or two of delegating this task, it takes you a total of two hours to get this done, right? So after a week or two, you might just be thinking to yourself, gosh, this is taking more time. I might as well just do it myself. But what I'm going to challenge you to think about is how many of those tasks are there that you should be done, that you are thinking, how many times a day is it running through your head? Oh, I just might as well do it myself. At the end of the day, you're probably wasting hours, hours on tasks that you need to delegate, right? 
The other thing I'm going to challenge you to think about is, yeah, it might take a total of two hours over a couple weeks to train this person to do that task. And you're thinking, well, that two hours just sucked up all my time. But a five minute task after a year, how much time did that take? How much time did it take? Even if you're doing that task, you know, just what, there's 20 days in a, that, about that we work in a month, okay? Times that by 12, times that by five minutes. Now let's even go deeper. How about in five years? You're still doing that task, right? How about 10 years? You're still doing that task. Now how much time have you wasted on that task? So really think about delegate. Delegating is just key. It's, uh, I think, was one of my biggest struggles. Again, I've had a lot, I have a lot of time management struggles. It was one of Brandy's biggest struggles, but when you really understand the power of true delegation, and yes, it takes a lot of training. It does. Nobody do is going to do it like you, which you need to let go of as long as the results are the same, right? And that's something I talk about a lot. I have an entire podcast episode on delegating, you guys. So if that's something you struggle with, go to my podcast and listen to the delegation episode I did. I really dive deep into it. The other one, and to me, the most important, most important thing for me when it comes to time management is really looking at your life and asking yourself, are you living a reactive life instead of a proactive life? Are you constantly reacting to what's coming into your life or are you proactively engineering your life? Okay, that is something I live by every, in almost, almost every aspect of my professional life, that is, like my go-to. So when people ask me, how have I become so successful with both of my businesses? How do I do this so quickly? How do I just, you know, find what I do? It's because I, I apply that philosophy to everything in my life. I am proactive instead of reactive. When you're reactive, you're constantly putting out fires and you have fires around you, right? When you're proactive, you're making sure that there's no brush around to cut catch on fire. So think about that. Just love I mean, really just think about that. What, you know, when the uh, fire department has defensible space or they do controlled burns in order to stop major fires from breaking out, they're actually being proactive and making sure that these huge overwhelming fires don't take things over, right? You can do that with your life. You need to clear the debris and the clutter in order to stop the fires from happening. That will save you so much time. Just being intentional with your days, planning your day out, right? Setting your days with intentions. Um, that's just huge. You know, look at when, so what I do at the beginning of each week is I ask myself, what are the top things I need to do next week that will get me to my goal? Getting to my goal is another subject I'll get on uh, one day. I'll talk to you guys about it's huge. The way I do it is a pretty big. Um, I set some pretty audacious goals for myself, which I achieve. And it's because of my time management, my proactive stance on things. But that's pretty much what I do every week. I just look at my calendar and I don't really, I don't create to-do lists. I am so, I... I guess they're kind of a to-do list, but not in the traditional sense that you would think of. I just ask myself, I look at my overall arching goal and um, I break my goal into from five year to one year to quarterly to monthly to weekly. And every week I look at, okay, this week, this is my goal. What actions do I need to complete by the end of this week to achieve this goal, right? And all those goals, everything is going to get me towards that five-year goal. And then I put it in my schedule. I find a time slot every week in my schedule to get it in there. And I actually schedule it in. I do, and I actually use a paper calendar first, and then I transcribe my paper into my phone. So it's dinging me every time. Every morning, I look at my phone after I do my self-care routine. I look to see exactly where am I supposed to be all day today? Who am I talking with? What am I doing? And those tasks are in there, the things that I need to do, which, um, you know, it just, a lot of times you're not getting in your calendar. Those are on my calendar every week and I actually schedule them in. So that's just being proactive instead of reactive. You guys, if you just apply that, nothing else but that into your life, you will just be amazed 
at how much of your life can be changed in every aspect, your professional and personal life. It's just amazing what transformation that can happen for you. Um, so that's really what I have for you guys today. And if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comments section. I do go back over them and try to answer your questions. I hope you guys are excited about the Recession Proofing Your Child Care uh, Center webinar series that's coming up. I will be again on live every day the week of the 21st, starting on the 21st at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to help you guys just learn the techniques that I've used. And I take the real techniques I use at my center and it, that I've put into place that really transformed my center to a failing center. It was a failing center at one point to a successful center that was fine during the pandemic, right? Uh, and the what I just will continue to do to make sure I can survive any kind of disaster and that will be okay. I can take care of my staff and everybody around me. So I hope you guys will be joining me for that. I really love doing those series and that's the one I've been getting asked for the most. So that again will be on the 21st. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and I hope to see you guys in the group later on. Bye guys.